Report. Calling all Shadow fans. The Shadowed Circle fan magazine, issues 4 through 6, are now available and are absolutely sensational. Just as good, if not even better, than the first three issues. Hello and welcome back to this damn fully dualistic crusade. This video is covering the new issues of the Shadowed Circle fan magazine. Issues 4, 5, and 6 of this wonderful uh, fan magazine of all kinds of incredible articles about the entire world of the iconic Knight of Darkness himself, the Shadow, in the realms of the original pulp magazine stories, in the history of the character, in the radio adaptations, in the comic adaptations, and even some articles about the films and what's happening with the character now. What's been really wonderful about these is that not only is it a labor of love by fans of The Shadow and people who have different experiences in and out of the industry, but also from everyday fans who don't have industry experience, but also have a great passion and knowledge of the character and the world of all of the classic pulp magazine heroes. So these uh, magazines cover all kinds of different aspects of both the the actual fiction material, but also the lives of the various individuals and particularly the original creator of The Shadow, Walter B. Gibson. So you will find incredible articles of historical value because there are uh, some really great articles about the history of the character, but also the history of the pulp magazine industry and what publishing was like at the time, but also articles about the history of New York City itself. So it's it's a far-reaching uh, amount of materials that are covered in these. And again, you can tell with every single page that this is a labor of love, right down to the beautiful covers and wonderful illustrations and photos contained in all of these. So essentially, three times a year you open your mailbox and it's Christmas morning and you have to fight the urge not to devour one of these in one sitting <laughs> because then you'll have to wait for the for the next issue to arrive so um, they're, they're a wonderful treat and they're also not not very expensive at all so I think they're really a must for any shadow or uh, pulp hero fan and if you've never gotten into the shadow or uh, the classic pulp magazine characters and you've maybe wanted to before this is a perfect starting place and will give you a sort of crash course and not just the shadow but the entire world of the various uh, pulp magazine characters so here here is issue four with this lovely custom artwork. Next on the back, it's hyping up the incredible Will Murray Doc Savage novels that finally feature a legitimate team up between the Man of Bronze and the Knight of Darkness. And these are absolutely essential reads with great covers themselves. But when you open this, we have the table of contents with the articles for this issue and longer articles are broken up across issues so some of these start here and only conclude in issues five and six here in issue four we have an incredible multi-part article that starts that actually does the nitty-gritty of how could the shadow actually exist in the real world financially and how much money would it take to run his incredible secret operations so you get that type of incredible fan insight and research. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic article. If you ever wondered how does a, a, an individual maintain this sort of one-man war on crime, well, here you get it in the financial statements. Uh, then we have, well, Murray writing an entire piece on uh, the mysteries of the shadow and various elements that are wonderful conjectures of, of various things and maybe secret meanings and things that uh, creator Walter Gibson may have put in there and Gibson being a famous magician and a lover of puzzles and secret messages and things would often do things like that, even with character names, which means that all of us fans can analyze the stories to death and look for all kinds of hidden meanings. That carries on to an entire article devoted to one of those characters under the name of B. Jonas, and exactly what does that name refer to, or who could it refer to possibly? And we have the first part of an examination of the Shadow's comic history in the 1940s, and this will continue in later issues, and it is an incredibly detailed look at the Shadow's development and his history in the comic realm, which in the 1940s was actually quite substantial. Then we get an entire article devoted to the comic book pairings and meetups between Doc Savage and The Shadow. This is merely the first of a multi-part section, so again, this is continued in later issues. We get the wonderful Shadow Laughs uh, cartoon. There is usually a custom Shadow-related cartoon, which is always nice to see in each of these. Then we get a comments and letters section, a conclusion of the Michael Uslan interview that started in the previous issues, and then we 
get an entire piece on the final radio episode broadcast of The Shadow in the 1950s and what that must have been like to experience. Issue 5 has this incredible cover by Joe Booth, which was done specifically for this, and it's been given a nice sort of aged treatment to resemble a pulp magazine that has survived. This is a beautiful cover, and this is another outstanding issue, which features some uh, extra parts and conclusions of articles from the previous issue. But additionally, there's an entire Will Murray examination of the 1938 essentially sabbatical that Walter Gibson took from the Shadow stories and discussing what that meant for the character and maybe why that even happened in the first place. We get more examination of the B. Jonas character. We get another section on the Shadow and how he may have played into actual world history events or vice versa, how world history events may have played into the development of the character. We get a review of Will Murray's new Dark Avenger book, which is his second book on the history and legacy of the Shadow as a character. Uh, then we get a nice examination of the 1954 television pilot for a Shadow series that never happened, which is a really fascinating curiosity. We get a piece on Walter B. Gibson's work in parapsychology, which is a fascinating a, a section of his life and career that um, I had not seen gone into in this level of detail before. And knowing this material can only uh, play into your reading of his writings and, and things he would add to his shadow novels. We again have some more uh, letters and then we have another wonderful Shadow Laughs cartoon. We have a nice article comparing and contrasting both The Shadow and Doc Savage with a nice bit of humor as well. And then we get another article devoted to the next chapter of The Shadow shadows comic history then a lovely custom piece of artwork with some nice humor to it issue six is really special because this is devoted to the myra reldon character who is the best and most important female character from the shadow pulp novels as opposed to the more famous margot lane who was created for the radio series and only eventually added to the pulp novels but uh, in the pulp realm which of course was much darker and had none of the mystical powers of the radio version uh, there were, of course, an entire cast of different agents of the Shadow instead of the one-on-one -on -one dynamic of the radio series. And Myra Reldon is a phenomenal character and an, an exceptionally strong female character, especially for uh, the Street and Smith pulp magazines, which, as a lot of the articles detail here, tried to downplay uh, romance and female characters as much as possible because they felt it didn't really resonate with their readers all that much. And anytime they tried that, they usually got a lot of complaints. So uh, they, 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 there was definitely a focus to, to try and keep that to a minimum. But the Myra Reldon character is an extraordinarily strong female character, especially at this time. And it's uh, fantastic that the Myra character gets an entire issue devoted to her. So in this issue, you will find all of these incredible articles on the character and uh, all of the interesting facets of her conception and the unique aspects of this character that also due to her adopting a certain type of disguise uh, doesn't necessarily have obviously doesn't necessarily have the, the 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 most pc qualities to it today however there are some great articles examining and discussing that further in context so uh even if you're not familiar with this character and just the idea of someone disguising themselves to pass among the uh, various Chinatown districts uh, unnoticed, uh, th there there is discussion of the character and that aspect in a modern context as well. So this is a extremely well-rounded issue. So we have an entire article about the uh, debut of the character, then another article uh, with a brief outline of each and every one of her appearances in the pulp novels. We have an entire article about the development of of the artwork and the cover for the Will Murray Dark Avenger, uh, his second book about the history of the shadow character. So we get a nice examination of what it goes into developing and refining a piece of artwork for a book cover. Then, of course, another Shadow Laughs cartoon, an article on Myra Reldon's brief appearance in the Death of Margot Lane comic from a couple years ago. Then comments and letters, of course. Then we have a Will Murray piece on the Shadow's adventures in Chinatown, which, of course, also involved Myra Reldon and how Chinatown, especially at this time in popular fiction and pop culture, had a certain mysticism to it. And while it wasn't necessarily the most realistic depiction of what an actual 
whole city's Chinatown district would be like. Uh, it's important and, and nice to have an entire article sort of getting to the root of why that 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 just conjures up so much in our imaginations about a, a sort of a sort of never never land that doesn't quite exist, but it's it's a fascinating idea to imagine a, a sort of section of a city full of back alleyways and secret doors and all kinds of uh, secret goings on. We have an article about Myra Weldon's appearances in the comics and newspaper strips. And then, of course, a, a fascinating article about the real-life possible inspirations that Walter Gibson had of various women that he either knew of or encountered who were extraordinarily strong characters who may have and seemingly did influence his creating of the Myra Reldon character. We have an article on the pulp novel where Myra Reldon and Margot Lane did cross paths, which is fantastic. We have an article on the historical background and details of uh, Reldon's operations in one of the novels. Then we close out with Anthony Tollin, who worked on a lot of the DC comics and was the publisher of the Sanctum reprints of the Shadow Pulp stories, uh, doing an article specifically on the Relding character and her importance to Gibson. So again, this is entirely focused on the Relding character, as you can see from this great artwork. And then on the rear, we have another gorgeous piece of artwork. So this is definitely the Myra Reldon issue. The Shadowed Circle is always looking for uh, more submissions, which I will leave a link to their website where you can choose to subscribe or maybe uh, submit an article if you'd like to write one. So those are the issues for this past year, issues four, five, and six. They are published three times a year, and you do get a discount if you subscribe, and you subscribe to all three issues for the coming year. Again, I'll leave a link to the Shadowed Circle website where you can subscribe should you wish to, and you can also pick up back issues, uh, which they also sell through Amazon. Uh, they also have these issues digitally, so you can get them as eBooks, but honestly, these are so nicely printed and made, and the artwork is so lovely that I really do enjoy getting the physical versions, but then again, I'm a physical book guy anyway, but uh, these are just wonderful treats for, for yourself if you are a Shadow fan or you love the classic Pulp Heroes or you just want to know more about the world of Pulp Fiction. Uh, this is an incredible fanzine that is a real labor of love and that comes through every page. I've also done a video on the Kickstarter they ran for a compendium volume of various articles from the past issues, plus a few new issues and things. So that has since closed, but I believe you can eventually order issues of that compendium volume should you wish to, but that's only going to get published in next year, uh, 2024. Also, one thing I wanted to do, um, I accidentally received a second copy of issue six, so I've decided to also turn this into a little bit of a giveaway. So if any of these issues have piqued your interest, I have an extra copy of the Myra Reldon issue number six. So if you're at all interested and you're within the continental U.S., please leave your uh, comment below that you'd like to be entered for a drawing. And, and after about a week or so, I'll gather up all the comments and draw a random winner who will receive this extra copy of issue number six. So those are just my thoughts and reactions of getting the wonderful uh, issues four through six, the second year of The Shadowed Circle, which is just as good, if not even better than the first year. Uh, these are just incredible treats to get in your mailbox three times a year, and I cannot recommend them strongly enough for all Shadow and Pulp fans. So as always, please do keep supporting independent publishing works like this wherever possible because these are real labors of love and are not done for money at all. Keep your pulp flags flying with your love of the classic pulp characters and enjoying the everlasting appeal of the shadow. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.